Hi everyone, Sean back with chapter seven of the USS Enterprise 1650 scale build from AMT. I'm running out of fingers, so hopefully we're gonna be done with this pretty soon. Uh, I just uh, didn't realize that I had so much recorded and so much content and with that I'm glad and I'm glad that you're sticking with me. Uh, so I do really appreciate it. So with that, what's here, what's in chapter seven now? Uh, if you saw chapter six, we just posted it a short time ago. I'm doubling up on on these uh, these two here, I'm same shirt. So recording this one uh, intro on the same day. So uh, what are we, we doing here? We are going through some of the airbrushing, we painted the model. Now uh, I do have to forewarn you, I wasn't able to get the setup properly to actually record myself airbrushing the model. I recorded uh, some airbrushing of the nacelle as you saw in chapter six with the uh, the blue chiller grill uh, but of actually airbrushing the model itself I didn't get too much on there. Hopefully you saw the technique on chapter six with the with the blue chiller grill. Essentially it's the same the same process and the same process I do with airbrushing as I do with the spray painting. Uh, light coats uh, a little bit at a time, patience, air drying in between coats, making sure it's dry to the touch before you reapply. Uh, and if you're not in a hurry, overnight is best to um, make sure to keep your models uh, dust free, keep them clean, sand them every now and then in between coats with a very fine grit uh, uh, sandpaper and wipe off the dust with a tack cloth or airbrush or wet cloth and you're good to go. So uh, with that, we're going to be going through all uh, showing all the painting. We painted the, the Boussard collectors. We painted the, uh, the cells. We painted the secondary hull and the saucer. Everything's painted in this one. And it ends with uh, talking about getting it to, to glue it in there. Um, I was going to put in the following process, but it got over an hour. So I'm like, okay, we're going to cut it off. And that'll be all for chapter eight. So I think we're going to end up with with probably nine chapters in this build, possibly 10 uh, as, a, as a short uh, reveal, uh, but we're gonna hurry along. I'm not gonna uh, delay this anymore. I've been putting out one video a week and I really, really appreciate everyone uh, watching along with, but I wanna wrap it up. I wanna show you guys all uh, the finish and hopefully you are also interested in seeing the finished product of this as well. And then we're on to the next build, which I have right in front of me. I uh, can't show you yet, of course, but uh, it's it's uh, my favorite favorite ship in the Star Trek line. Uh, hopefully you'll all like it as well. And uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with that one. So I'm, I'm really anxious to get to the next one. And I've got a ton of other builds uh, planned. I've got... Uh, just a lot of unopened model kits that I just can't wait to dive into and start sharing with everybody. And uh, again, uh, we're, as we approach the end of this series, uh, hopefully you've noticed the video quality has gotten a little bit better. Hopefully the, uh, the content is good. And for those of you who are sticking around, I really, really appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Yeah, I would really appreciate it, and I welcome all the comments and everything. I'm trying to respond to everybody as as, as quickly as I can. Uh, just as a kind of disclaimer, I do work quite a bit. I work about 60 to 80 hours a week, depending. So uh, I, I'm very passionate about this, and I try to get into the shop here as, as much as I can. But if there's any delay in me responding to you, uh, please accept my apologies. I, I do really, really appreciate your feedback. And I, my goal is to respond to everyone in the comments that, that has something to say or something to share. And I really do appreciate all of your tips and your tricks and your suggestions. Uh, and we're going to be doing something really cool here. In between builds, I'm going to do a, a nice video where we're going to share some uh, some models that the viewers have sent in to me through email. So I really thank you very much. So if you have any of your own that you'd like to share, please email me is the sci-fi model guy at gmail.com and uh, give me your first name or the name you'd like me to use in, in uh, showcasing your stuff. Uh, let me know. Uh, that's going to be a really cool feature. I'm really happy to kind of officially announce that I've been collecting some, some uh, pictures from folks. I really can't wait to show what you all are doing 
uh, because that's what this is all about. And and I, I'm anxious to see it. I want to see all everything you're doing. And um, maybe we'll we'll answer some questions and do some highlights of some comments people have made. Some like I said, some great suggestions, and we'll talk about some other things. So. Uh, gonna have that cool in between video in between the build series, uh, which I wish I could tell you what it is, but I'm not gonna tell you. So, all right, with that, enough of me blabbing. This is gonna be a long one, folks. It's I think uh, with this intro, it's gonna be about an hour and ten, hour and fifteen minutes. So, so put it on double speed or just strap in. And if you're going on a long car ride or something, hopefully this will keep you a little bit of company. All right, happy modeling, everyone. Let's get on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome back, <clears throat> and we are ready to paint. Here we go with the fun stuff. Uh, it's the part that I've been looking forward to, and hopefully you have too, and at least you will be if you're doing your own kit. <clears throat> so uh, before we get into it, just like usual, I'm going to blab a little bit and talk a little bit about what we're going to do here, and if you hear anything in the background, that is my airbrush compressor, uh, so I'm going to give it a little, and you'll... You may be able to hear that little motor coming on and off. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. So what do we have here? Here, Well, it's the airbrush, the thinner, and some paints, and the, and the cells here that we're going to talk about. Now, my airbrush is an Iowata, and uh, it was a, I got this at Hobby Lobby for $69. Uh, I've owned three airbrushes, and this by far is my favorite. Uh, I'm, I'm not endorsing them, uh, not promoted by anybody, of course, uh, but from other reviews and, and videos I watched, it seemed like there a lot of airbrushers like this brand. It's a Japanese brand, and it's uh, so far has served me extremely well. It has not clogged, uh, and I know that might be partially due to my care of it, but I think it's it's also a testament to how nicely this, this brush is designed. Um, it is a dual action airbrush, which means that you can control how much air is coming out uh, uh, of the, um, how much pressure is coming out. So dual action is, action one is to let the air out. And if I were just to press it like this, you would see no paint coming up. And then when I pull it back, you would see paint coming out. And the farther you pull this trigger back, the more paint comes out. So that's what's called dual action. Uh, single action, obviously, it's just like uh, using a spray paint. Uh, it comes out in one speed and you can't really control it. Um, never used one. I'm sure there's uses for them. They, may, I think they're a little cheaper. Um, so if you have a little bit of extra income and you want that extra airbrush maybe to uh, dump down a lot of paint and cover big areas and you're not worried about finesse, uh, go for it. Uh, I've found this one to serve my needs. This is a medium... Uh, they classify it as as a, a medium thickness, so they have extreme detail, fine, medium, and then wide and extra wide. So I don't know the millimeter the size of this nozzle, uh, but fits right in there. Uh, dig the airbrush. It comes with two two paint reservoirs. This one I think is ten milliliter, and and this one is five or something. I I always just use the big one. Um, but it's nice uh, to have, and they have a little tool here to take it apart. I've never had to use it. I mean, I've, I've taken it apart to clean it and everything. I'm not going to go through that in this video, but um, they have this for some purpose, and it's I think it's to take off one of the bits of the nozzles. And then lastly, they have this nice little cap uh, that you can put on, and it has a little hole in there to allow air through. Uh, I, I don't think I've used this. I like to be able to look down and see how much paint I have left. So I'm pretty careful, usually. I have had a little minor spill now and then, but nothing too serious. Uh, anyway, I, again, I'm not I'm not going to go too much into the airbrush uh, thing. There's, there's far smarter people than me uh, on YouTube that would be able to... You could find some nice uh, videos on them. I may talk a little bit about what I do. But um, but again, that's uh, not not maybe down the line. <laughs> so let me clean this up, and it looks like I have the. Let's 
Excuse me for a minute. I have my airbrush caught on my compressor, and I think I'll just I'll just lift it up here on the desk just so you can see what I'm using. Uh, I think this is a German. A German brand. I don't even remember the brand. I've had it for a while. I ordered it off of Amazon a few years ago. I really like it. Uh, the only downfall of it is it does not contain a very large quantity of air. It's pretty much always running when I'm spraying. Um, it's very easy to set the, the air pressure, nice on-off switch. I can, I can press this little release valve and clean out the, the filter down here, which you can see maybe it does collect a little moisture so you can do that but uh this so far this has been great uh i don't get any uh moisture in my hose or anything it works really well i uh, wish i knew the name of the brand for you uh may be able to dig it up um but pretty much if you're going to get into airbrushing uh just do some research uh look at reviews read reviews on amazon and or wherever you're buying it from and uh you shouldn't shouldn't go too wrong um yeah so uh here's the brush uh it's connected i i have it set at about 15 psi pounds per square inch uh this particular brush can run anywhere between eight and and uh, 20 psi uh, i found 15 so and when i say 15 i mean it's 15 psi as i'm in as it's blowing out so when you let go, your airbrush uh, gauge will pop up a little bit, go like to 20. Um, but I have it, so when it's going out, this is 15 PSI, and that seems to work really, really well. All right, so enough talking about the airbrush. I'll just put this away, and I'm going to show off something really neat. Uh, the first thing we're going to paint here is the best part for me anyway, which is the chiller grills on these nacelles and um usually i don't like to do the cool parts first because the cool parts of something are kind of like the little dessert it's like the little reward for me for hard work then you do the neat part it's like you know putting decals on or or whatever it is you know it's just my um my thing or if i'm drawing something you know maybe doing the details of the eyes i do last because that's what really makes something pop but uh anyway the reason I'm doing the nacelles first on this is because we are going to be putting this Tamiya clear. Now, uh, and what I don't want to do is spray paint or spray this nice gray on the nacelles and get it down there and then have to mask the entire nacelle over again just to get the blue on there and I may not get it right. And so what I did was I took off the, I had this thin paint, uh, tape, which is this tape here. I think it is... Oh, an eighth of an inch, or I'm sorry, quarter inch maybe. Uh, I'd have to look. It's thin. <laughs> um, and this happened to be just the perfect width for these pieces here. So uh, I'm going to paint these with the blue, the, the Tamiya Clear Blue, and then when it's dry, I'm going to let it dry overnight. Then, and again, let it dry overnight. And after it's dry, then I will apply this mask back on top of it and then paint the paint the rest. The other one, the other model I've done of this this way, I did it the other way around. I did the gray first and then the blue, and it came out just wretched. So I'm going to do it this way. And from my first impressions here, um, I think it's going to be great. You can see here how crisp these lines are. No, no paint ran down in there. I didn't I think one little tiny area over here. I can barely see it. Uh, but when I took these uh, this tape off, I was really, really happy with this. And again, this goes into the patience that we had in, in priming this. So, uh, many light coats of paint. And you don't let it get on there too thick or anything because it would have run right under that, that tape and covered this. So uh, I was super pleased with that. It made me smile, actually, when I took it off and I kind of did a fist pump so i'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights here and um we can see here in a little bit better detail let me move the light uh how how it came out so this is super cool you, and uh I'm, I'm really 
excited to get this painted. So what I'm going to do here, turn this off, the light back. We're going to load up the airbrush here with the Tamiya Clear Blue. Uh, oh, I don't think this is clear. Yeah, glad I looked. This is regular blue. It looks like clear. I always check. I forgot I had bought that. Uh, here's my Tamiya Clear Clear Blue X23 for those of you who are uh, taking stock of what you might want to buy. This is Tamiya Clear Blue. And uh, I have here some Tamiya Acrylic Thinner X20A. This is their standard acrylic thinner. Uh, they do also make the, the uh, lacquer thinner, which I think I can use with it. But I like to use the acrylic uh, thinner. Um, generally... I do a ratio of two parts paint to one part thinner. I have read a little bit on the clear, on thinning it down from what the sites I've seen. Everyone says you kind of find your own way with it. Um, it all depends on how much air pressure you're using. Uh, it even depends on what thinner you're using and what the humidity is even in, in where you are and what the temperature is. So there's a lot of variables. Um, so if you're just getting into airbrushing and you're you're tooling around with it and you're just not getting the right results that you you want to see, uh, don't fret. Experiment around a little bit. Get some spare pieces of plastic uh, or um, even cardboard or whatever you have, and just play around with uh, with your air, air pressure settings. Uh, all kinds of stuff. It takes a while to really kind of get in the groove uh, of airbrushing, and it's easy to want to give up. Uh, but uh, stick with it, man. I mean, if you if you invest in the airbrush, learn how to clean it. I would say that's number one priority. Learn how to keep your your brush clean, so it won't clog on you and cause you frustrations. So anyway, so I'm I'm just shaking up this uh, this blue because it's uh, it did get a little cold in here in the garage today. I I had the heater on, but I had it turned down kind of low, so. Just shaking it up here and wasting a little time and uh, there we go okay so I think it's I think it's good so again uh, we're gonna do one part thinner to two parts of the paint uh, now how do we measure that good question we have uh, thankfully these eyedroppers uh, there's they come in various sizes there's different kinds of methods you can um, they have small ones. They have big ones. I, I just, this is the size I have right now. Um, but I, I think thankfully I've come to know my, my airbrush well enough to where I can pretty much eyeball my one part thinner to two parts paint more or less, uh, to the point where I don't have any, uh, disasters with it but uh, if you are just starting and you say okay I want to go and exact I recommend finding a, a few of these small ones and doing exactly one to two ratios you know where you get the eyedropper one millimeter milliliter two milliliters do it and then do the same with a different uh, eyedropper of the paint and that will and when you do it so here's what I'm going to kind of, how about I, how would I do as I talk so that we're not wasting too much time here. So I kind of use the, hopefully you can see the, the level here. So the thinner's up to this amount. So I don't need a lot of paint on this. I don't need to load this thing fully. So I am going to have to kind of eyeball it, make sure I get all the bubbles out of there. And this is, I think one milliliter anyway so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna squirt this in there and then i'm gonna take a look in there and i see kind of how how much that uh, filled up so let me whoops dripped a little thinner down on there i don't want that to happen So yeah, we're doing a little, very, very brief lesson on how I'm doing my airbrushing, and it's probably incorrect. So hold, hold, pardon me for a minute, I'm just trying to read this. 
I think it is one millimeter. Mil Gosh, I can't say that word. Milliliter. So, so you said that one milliliter actually it does. You, you don't think it's a lot. But if I do one of these, okay, of thinner, then I have to do two of them of paint. So twice as much. And I think that's probably it. Now, when I squared this in there, you'll see, maybe it's, well, this is a 10 milliliter cup. So maybe I'm just not reading that word. And I, I do apologize, everyone. So bear with me, but just going on site. So you can see here that I lit, I just filled this sucker up with the first thinner being there and the second one being there. So I don't think I need that much. It, that would be quite a lot of paint to use. I, that amount of paint I could probably cover the lower uh, secondary hall with that, that amount uh, on a good first coat. So I'm going to go a little less. So this is where I'm going to eyeball it. So do forgive me. So I just put a little bit in there and I just a few little squirty squirts in there. Now there's there's a new word I don't think I've ever heard on YouTube. Squirty squirts. If you ever watch uh, How I Met Your Mother, there was that that episode where he sends a texty text. And that was probably one of the funniest things I saw on that show, and I just said squirty squirt. But you know what? I'm leaving it in. I'm leaving that in there. So so I'm just shaking the uh, the old can off camera here okay so uh for this part uh i'm gonna i'm just gonna pause the video real quick i'm gonna go off camera fill this to the right amount and then i'll uh show you what i did okay uh i'm back i just opted to uh do it on camera so i've got the thinner in there and i've got my can of clear open now i'm just gonna pour it by hand i don't and that before i do that the reason i don't use an eyedropper for it is uh, twofold. One of them is I'm pretty good at eyeballing it at this point. And the second one is I don't want to waste eyedroppers. Uh, because once you put a color in one of these things, that color either sticks in there and kills the eyedropper so you can't use it anymore, or it locks you into just using that color for that eyedropper. And I don't want a thousand eyedroppers sitting around my garage. Uh, these things are pretty cheap. Uh, so I, I just opt to, um, I don't want to throw them away and be wasteful, even though they're cheap. Uh, but at the same time, I, I can eyeball this. So got that little bit in there. So I'm going to pour. What feels like twice the amount. Now, it may not look like that. Be like, well, Sean, you the level of the thinner was at a certain thing, and now the level's twice that amount. True. Uh, but one thing I learned to keep in mind is that this is a, uh, it's, it's like a, a, a funnel. It, it's thinner at the bottom than on the top. So the amount of paint that you're pouring in, uh, it takes more to get it to a certain level. I hope I'm explaining that correctly. So anyway, I just moved off camera. I, do, I, I have a little holder for my airbrush that I got that it's off camera obviously maybe one day if I ever do a shop reveal if I can get this place cleaned up <laughs> nicely enough uh, I'll show you I really like it. it's like a little holster for your for your airbrush okay so uh, I've got my little towel here and I've got my thinner let me just do one little thing here. I've got this little cup here. And this cup is a little tin cup. I got a pack of a few of them. It comes in handy sometimes. I'm just pouring a little thinner in there. And that. Oh, it's really reflecting, isn't it? Weird. Um, I'll show you what that's for in a second. Okay, so I got the airbrush here and I've got this handy little brush uh, that's it was part of an airbrush cleaning kit that I got and I use this very thick bristle I use this to stir 
my paint. You can use uh, a toothpick. You can use all kinds of various things. I like this thing because the paint comes off of it pretty quickly or nicely. Like it doesn't seem to stick on there. So I just take it and I they put it away again. I just do that and then I swish it around in the thinner a little bit get it off and that way I can use it again to stir up another color so that is that little tool Just gonna wipe it off every now and then I'll go through and deep clean this thing uh, with a wire bristle brush and some lacquer thinner and really get it cleaned up but I'm good for now okay uh, another thing I'm always checking myself for wet paint so I don't touch something and get it on there and now okay I've got it stirred up and I've got my cloth here now let's give it a little test spray it's coming out good you can see the spray is, is there on my little test pattern always test it always always test your your pour if you're experienced you know this if you're inexperienced, you probably figured that out. All right, so now I'm going to just go ahead and start spraying. And if you see here this white stuff, that's just some putty I put on a few minutes ago. I'm going to be sanding that off, uh, but it's fine. So here we go. We're going to spray this again very lightly. Very lightly. On the first go around, and that's it. If you can see, it's very like, oh, it's so much fun. This, this right here, I got a big smile on my face right now. And uh, this, this is where you just start getting giddy over it because you're picturing this light coming on. Oh, it went a little, went a little heavier on this one. That's okay. And uh, if you notice here, it's okay if I'm over spraying a little bit, it's getting on the black primer. That's fine. Uh, it's not going to show. We're going to be painting that over with the gray. And uh, this is such a thin paint, uh, you won't even notice it. Uh, so so this is, I think, the way to go. So when it's all dry, we'll we'll tape that over again. And, and then do the gray and then do the big reveal. Let me get, get over to this one here. Now, I do get... A little nervous and maybe if someone's an experienced brusher and you can uh, comment um, I when I do these layers I get really nervous about my my needle and my paint drying up and 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 um, so I'll often times tend to want to rush this part uh, or keep painting keep painting get it right which causes it to runs and so and I'm just, I've had brushes where the paint dries up in the needle and then I have to take, you know, waste the paint, pour it out, take this apart, pull the needle out, clean it, uh, use thinner and let that dry and put it, it's just a pain. Um, so maybe if anyone has any, any tips that's watching this, throw a comment in there and tell me what your trick might be. Um, I mean, again, it's nothing that keeps me from doing the airbrushing. I love it. Uh, but again, uh, I'm, I'm here to learn too, so... Please, if you're going to be a fan of the channel, and if you have some knowledge or you know something that you think I might benefit from, please uh, share it. And uh, if we can get this channel popular enough, um, maybe we can do some some videos like uh, like viewer mail or uh, question and answers or something. And you know, if there's something you might pose a question, I'd have to do some research to find out, and then we can have a uh, a nice learning session so um yeah it's a little community spiel right there so i'm putting the airbrush away for one second in its little holster i'm going to pause the video i'm going to walk over and give this an air dry uh real quick with the air dryer for just about 10 30, uh, 10, 30 seconds uh to there just to get it so i can keep keep proceeding and i think that might be the the ticket just like we do with the spray paint but i'm gonna hit it so it dries up and then i can keep applying it um this paint's clear i want this to be uh nice and nice and build this up really well so be right back everyone okay we're back 
a little sip of my my beverage here. Mm. Good tasty beverage. Okay, we're gonna continue. I got a, I hit it with the hair dryer for a few seconds on each one, and it uh, dried up pretty nicely. Let me give it a little test off camera there. Still good. Mm, a little bit heavy there. It's a nice thing about the dual action. If you pull back a little too fast or too hard with it, it's very easy to let go of it and kind of kind of reorient yourself. Yeah, airbrushing is really fun. I really like it. It's um, It was never something I thought I was going to really like to do. Uh, and then when I started modeling a few years ago and got my first airbrush, I was like, wow, this is really cool. And, um, you know, I started playing around on some, some paper and doing little designs and stuff. And some of the artwork people do as airbrushers is just absolutely mind-boggling mind boggling it's impressive stuff i don't think i could ever do it but uh you know, you know we may need to load some more paint eventually on this so um yeah it's looking really really good i don't know how this is coming on the camera uh but it's looking pretty nifty what you know what let's do a little light test here and geek out a little bit May as well. The paint's staying uh, pretty nice and nice and wet there. So why not do a test? And and this is something I was I'm wanting to do anyway because I want to see how thick I have to get this on. So here we go. I'm gonna turn it on. Let me turn off the light there. Wow. Now that is something pretty cool. If I if I might say, I it's a, it's a very light blue yet. Uh, it still needs to get quite a few shades darker. I think I want it. I want it very dark and um, very subtle. I, I may have um, been wise to put a coat of white paint behind it, very lightly on the other side, which I've done for some builds. Uh, where uh, Boyd at uh, Trekworks recommends is like for them to sell on the on the Enterprise E. Uh, he'll do, and I've done on mine where you dust the underbelly of it with just some light white. Uh, uh, just regular white and that kind of diffuses the the light a little bit but seeing as how this is just coming through the plastic i think a few more coats should be fine um live and learn either way i mean it's going to look good um so may maybe doing the white underneath wasn't is it maybe as best i didn't we'll find out uh, i have a feeling that we're on the right track so you know i'm just gonna leave this on why not Let's see what happens. Maybe we can see this change in in almost real time. Not quite. Let me get another. So here's what I'm gonna do, everyone. I'm gonna stop the camera here. I'm just gonna keep doing this. I think uh, I've labbed quite a bit. It is getting darker. I'm gonna give this a few more passes you know dry it and paint it dry it and paint it and if it still remains to be uh, a little brighter than i'm than i'm wanting yeah it's looking okay uh what i was going to say though is i was considering maybe using a touch of this uh it's it's called smoke it's almost it's just like a, a darkener um I don't think I want to do that. Um, this is going on pretty good. Now, this is where the patience comes in. So I, right away, I'm thinking, oh, it's too light. I got to do something. And I got, I'm got stopping myself in, in real time for you guys so, so I can I can think about it. Um, I think, yeah, I think we're just going to continue with the, with the multi-layers of the blue because I love this blue color so much. Uh, it, it's such a, a rich, neat, neat color, and I don't want to muddy it or s permanently ruin it by adding some smoke. I think just multiple layers is the way to go. So, okay, we just heard in real time uh, my thought process. Uh, normally, I don't talk to myself, but I'm talking to you. 
So, uh, again, I'm going to take this over to the hairdryer, uh, run it off. I'm going to do probably uh, four or five more coats off camera, and then, then I'll come back and we'll do another light test and we'll talk a little bit more. See you in a minute. All right, so we've gone in and made a number of passes. I pretty much emptied out that uh, airbrush there. I probably could go one or two more goes with it. And I probably will anyway, but I just couldn't resist and I wanted to do the lighting live on camera so we can all check out and see how this is going to be. So, uh, okay, and uh, just to make you wait a little bit more, uh, I am going to talk a little bit about Mr. Hairdryer here. Um, benefit of these, a lot of, a lot of people use heat guns. Uh, I have come to like the heat dryer uh, the hair dryer more mainly because you can set the temperature on it a little bit there's only a couple settings the heat guns tend to be the, even the lowest setting is ultra hot and can melt plastic uh, and the other thing is this regular hair dryers have this little cooling button so if it's getting hot you can just hold it down and cool air goes uh, i just find it much easier to control it does the same job so uh, if you're considering getting into this and you don't have a way to dry your paint uh, just just get a hair dryer that you can use for all other purposes or borrow one if you won't get in trouble and uh, <laughs> uh we'll go from there so just giving it a how about i don't yell um we're just giving it a quick last dry and then i'm gonna go ahead and turn on the the light Okay, uh, yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate that so that you, you all could see it. Uh, and the reason is you don't want to get too close to your piece. You want to make sure it's not too hot and you want to be moving it around. This plastic, even now I'm touching it, it is warm from that air. And it's very, very easy to bend this stuff and warp it and stuff. So we don't want to do that. So if you're using the, the heat uh, air dryer, just be very careful with it mind that it's hot and keep it moving keep it distant use that cool button uh, pull it away and test it it should be okay all right without further uh, further ado let's give it a shot oh wow okay this is exactly what i wanted i am thrilled i'm not patting myself on the back but this here is 100 percent what i was hoping for everyone uh it, i've got just a tiniest little nick there i'm not even going to worry about that I, there's nothing i can do about that little bit anyway this is crisp it's straight the color is just right i can't see any of the hot spots as they call them where you would see where the individual bulbs are and that's because we didn't it's not going through clear plastic and uh, the airbrush is empty so uh Wow, uh, what a thrill. I love this. Uh, this is going to look so cool when it's painted. <laughs> Everyone, I hope uh, I hope our friend Mike is happy with this. I'm, I'm thrilled for it. So, uh, let me go through here. I've got some thinner. I, and I'm just going to prep my brush to change colors. I'll just show you live on camera. Now, before I do that, let's get these... Wow, I'm just, I'm just smiling. <laughs> this 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 turned out so cool. Now th these are the moments uh, we live for. You know, the modeling is nice. It's nice to be alone in our thoughts and uh, with our thoughts and and or listening to music or whatever we're doing. Uh, but man, those little moments there where something just pops and you just you just get super excited. <laughs> Hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Time to clean the old airbrush. I'm just going to show this uh, minor thing. So I filled this with some some uh, thinner. It, and this is Vallejo thinner. Um, the stuff we were painting with is Tamiya. Uh, Vallejo is just an, it's another paint company. Uh, I recommend, uh, and it's recommended all over the places, that you should, whatever paint you're using, use that company's thinner. 
Uh, you could probably use other thinners, uh, but uh, the paints you get are designed to work the best with those thinners that, that, that they make. So uh, pick a paint you like and get their thinner and use that. Now you may hate their thinner and it may cause you to use a different paint, but either way, I definitely recommend... Uh, I definitely recommend uh, use the company thinner. So, <coughs> but for this purpose, I, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, the fumes came right up, <coughs> got me. Um, I'm just using this thinner here to clean the airbrush out because we're going to change colors. We're going to go to the clear red, uh, the Tamiya clear red, and we're going to paint the nacelles next. So more fun, and I get to hold them against the nacelle and see that red glow. So I'm super excited for that. We'll be doing the same same processes uh with that get the light back on for you and um so here i'm i'm just what i'm doing here i just filled the cup up with it with the thinner usually i, I aim it away uh <laughs> toward the trash can or just away from my face but i'm just showing you guys so <laughs> i'm coughing a little bit uh probably not a good idea <laughs> so anyway i'm just doing one full through with the thinner and then I'm going to fill it again. And I don't know if you can see in there. Let me get the flashlight. I don't know if you can see in there. So you can probably see there's still a little bit of blue. There's some blue. It actually cleaned out pretty nicely. Uh, so I'm, gonna I'm just going to fill it again here, halfway. And I'm going to do... I don't know the name of this technique, but what you do is you get kind of a, a cloth or something and you hold it over the tip and you pull it. And what that does is it forces the air back through and it starts bubbling like a little cauldron. And you can, you can kind of hear that. It sounds like a witch's brew or if you grew up in the seventies, something, something else. <laughs> uh, I might cut that out. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just doing this to uh, to kind of churn up any paint that might have been in between the cup and the, and the end of the needle. That's probably fine. Again, I'm doing a color change. Uh, so when you do a color change, you don't need to do a full clean. You just got to make sure that what's coming out doesn't have any color on it because I don't want the nacelle caps to be purple which is what we'd get. So uh, I'm wiping this out. You can also use a little, these little cotton, um, like almost Q-tips or craft swabs, or if you're in Australia or the UK, they're cotton buds. I've seen them referred to as cotton buds. So, and I don't recommend swooshing this around, getting it wet, because there are little fibers on here. They can come off. These are pretty tight. Uh, this is this is a good, a really good brand. Uh, they're very solid. I wouldn't use like a normal Q-tip. It has all little fibers and things sticking out because if one falls off and gets in there, uh, the, the the nozzle on these things are so small. Just that little fiber of your of a Q-tip could be enough to cause a clog and uh, just make a very bad day so uh, I am also looking in here I don't know if we can see I do have some blue uh, paint stuck in there so with that part I'm going to take where we poured a little bit of that thinner in this cup before that I will take this bit a little bit and just swirl it around in there you can see it's picking it up uh, a lot of times if you're working and you set your airbrush down for a while, um, that little bit, there's paint there. And if you let it sit for too long, that little paint can dry very quickly, uh, dr or dry enough to prevent any paint from coming out, especially if you're using a low pressure like I am here. So, um, if you're going to set down your, your brush for a little minute or two, um, it's, it may even be worth it when you come back, just get this, get your swab, dip it in your, your thinner that hopefully you have it some a little bit ready and just give it a little wipe, uh, before you start proceeding and, uh, and then give it a go. So let me pour a little bit. 
I'm doing a very much a, a more thorough clean than I usually would for a color swap uh, here here just to demonstrate because I mean I'm here I may as well show you how I do it a little bit again it's not a airbrush tutorial but um, why not we're here right so I'm gonna unscrew this and that lets me get in a little bit deeper just taking a look in there it looks really clean looks really good again this uh, this Iowata uh, I don't know what it is maybe I got lucky getting this particular brush or they're just that well made but boy do these clean smooth I rarely have to take this whole thing apart which I used to have to do for my old brush uh, but yeah, the fewer times you actually have to take the disassemble the whole thing, the better. Because th these needles are so, they're so th perfectly balanced and perfectly made. Even bending them that much will cause a problem for you and cause it not to work well. Okay, so we're ready to go. Uh, let's see here. Let's clean up. Let me get these two nacelles out. Now, the trick here is going to be... How am I going to hold these while I'm painting them? So before I set up, and before you set up, before you start filling your airbrush with paint or you open your, start mixing stuff or putting things where they're going to dry out, you, um, make a plan. Um, so I did go ahead and I primed the edges of these last night, I think it was. And I went through with a regular brush and just painted the inside of that. So I don't want any, I don't want to have to keep putting coat after coat after coat of primer on this side and keep it clean. I just kind of smudged it in here because uh, we're not going to see it. The importance was to block the light. So if you could block the light in areas like that and smush it in with a paintbrush and really get it thick and you don't have to care about how nice it looks, do that. I mean, it's much better than just put one smooth coat on the outside. Uh, and then, of course, scrape off the paint there. So what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to get a little bit of a little bit of tape on each of these just in here one there and put a little bit of tape right there and the reason I'm doing this is because I am going to use my bamboo skewer alligator clips to hold these guys so the reason I put the tape on there because these things are they're sharp, and even though this is just primer, I don't want it to dig into the piece so much. I'm not worried about it making a mark, uh, but I just don't want it to scrape the paint off to the point where I'd have to reprime. So, just a, a little mass there to kind of kind of protect what I'd already done before. Okay, let me walk over to the thing. I promise I'm not leaving you. Going over here to our handy foam uh, bamboo holder thing so that when these are drying, I can poke them in. I'll, I'll just poke them in like that. Hello. And <laughs> and then I can hair dry them. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm having a fun time with these things. So uh, hopefully you are too. Almost look like uh, eyeballs. You know what they look like? They look like the eyes from if you watch Sesame Street. If you remember the aliens, like oh, oh, yup, yup, yup. They look like those little guys. Okay, so I yeah, I got this, and I'll be uh, doing doing my airbrush, and then put them in here and and do the the air drying here. So uh, I got this was my domes. I think I'll just put that around right here. All right, so everything's set up. I am not going to record ye old painting of nacelle caps because you all have seen how I do it. I'm going to do do the same approach. Uh, shake the heck out of this clear red. Uh, the ratio I picked from before was was spot on. I'm going to do a little less paint, maybe. Um, if I can, I mean, I, gosh, I put so minimal in there, but these are very tiny. Uh, I don't know, maybe the same. I think I'll just do the same. It wasn't like I would be wasting so much, and I don't think uh, putting it all on. Again, here we go with me thinking out loud for you. 
Now that I think of it, I think I will do the same amount because even though it's a probably a smaller area that I'm painting, it's a lighter color. And I may have to apply more, more paint to this. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, the, my other build I did, the red, it was enough. I wish I would have done more and better, but uh, yeah, we'll just stick with this. So, yeah. Again, and I'm leaving this stuff in for everyone because if you're a beginner, um, you're going to be wondering these things too and thinking about these things. So I'm I'm kind of letting it all out there, even my mistakes and uh, all the warts and, and goofs and everything because we learn more by failure than by success. And if my thought processes work out, I want you all to know what they are and... What better way to do that than to just talk to myself so you all hear what's going on in my noodle. So, sorry, I'm, I'm all off camera shaking this thing, but I don't think you want to see this. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let me take a look. It really gave this a good shake. And if you don't use your paints very often, it's um, important to really shake the... Shake the boogies out of them and keep them nice and sealed. Uh, my paints have lasted me a long, long time. Uh, thankfully, maybe I've just had a couple times where they've dried out on me. Um, and that's just because I didn't put the caps on very good. Or if I did get a spill, I, I was dumb and didn't clean it off so it gets a tight seal. Uh, so the, another important thing if you're new, if you're especially if you're dipping your brush in and using that to paint, uh, clean, clean up the... Always make sure you clean your, <coughs> excuse me, your your uh, jar, your paint jar. Uh, just even just put a little thinner on here like this and just wipe it around. And even here you, you get some on there and uh, you'll, you'll thank yourself. Just like with a spray can, if you uh, turn it, uh, if you spray, turn it upside down and spray it for a couple seconds till the sound's different and then wipe it off. Uh, you're not wasting paint by doing that. You're saving all the paint that's left in the can because it will clog. And there's ways to unclog it, but they're, paint, they're a pain. All right, so uh, little, a little G.I. Joe, now you know moment. Because knowing is half the battle. Okay. Got that going. I've got a little bit of a thinner left in here. Luckily, I do have a spare bottle of this. So uh, we're gonna do. I'm gonna do the same exact thing, everybody. So I'm again not gonna record it. I'm gonna get this thing painted red. Uh, <coughs> do a couple light tests with it, and I will come back when I'm happy with it. And if anything weird happens, of course I will let you know. And if anything doesn't weird happen, I will yammer on about something else. Okay. Hopefully, uh, things will be good next time. We'll catch you in a minute. And it's the following day. I've gone ahead and let these uh, nacelle chiller grills uh, dry up from, the, from that nice uh, clear blue that we put on there. And I've uh, remasked them and also gone ahead and cleaned up some of the putty work that I did here. Uh, you'll see some gray here and you'll see some, some putty work. Uh, I'm not concerned about the gray. I actually I rubbed off the primer, but there's no lights, uh, light blocking issues uh, on this part. I'm not even concerned about it. So it's, it's going to be fine. So I put the putty work in there, sand it down, and hopefully the seam here in between these two pieces, I'm not even pointing at it. Uh, hopefully the seam here in between these two pieces uh, won't, won't even be that apparent. And, and also the, the seams that are here, let's even find them. I think I've done a pretty good job on this one. Uh, it's that and this kit, uh, the nacelles actually fit together pretty good. Every now and then you get a kit that they don't quite mesh together very well, but this one did. Uh, I had to do very little putty work and sanding. Uh, and here, again, the seam is, is right here. It's hard to see. Now, it will be more apparent when I paint it gray. This is, it, you can't really see it now because it's, it's the black primer, but... Uh, Anyway, and uh, a little quick uh, view of my my setup here. Um, maybe one day we'll do a tour when I can get it cleaned up. So uh, I'm not too proud of this mess, but if you're a 
modeler, you probably see a lot of uh, things that are familiar here. Okay, so uh, why am I doing this little bit here? Uh, so I've got the trusty styrofoam here and these kebab things with alligator clips and the nacelles propped up on here. I've got the part where we're going to glue here is taped off. And I've also taped off where the wire is bare over here, uh, just in case I get overspray. I just don't want to have to worry about paint getting on, on the wires. So what I'm going to be doing, I, and I'm not going to be able to film this. Uh, so I've got the, the old airbrush ready to go here uh, to turn on. And I'm going to be using uh, this. Uh, the color I choose for this kit is Tamiya XF12 and it's a JN gray. So if you are keeping track of the colors, I really like this color. It has that little tinge of green to it that, that the uh, show actually kind of had. And again, as I think I've stated before, you can mix your own with some pretty inexpensive mixture of, uh, it's like an ivory white with a, no, I'm, I'm so sorry. It's it's a gray and then there's like a green. I have the two here that I'm going to be using for my 350 build, which is the big three-foot uh, TOS Enterprise. Uh, if you're interested in seeing one of those check uh, right now, check out Trekworks. Uh, he's got a great, great series, uh, tons of content, tons of details on there. I'm going to do one eventually. Uh, probably not quite as detailed as Boyd's, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to show you a few things that you might not see on his videos. And again, that is not to knock his videos at all. He, uh, Boyd over at Checks for full disclosure, Boyd at Trekworks is my inspiration for this channel, everyone. So, uh, among a few others, but Boyd is by far, I think, if you're looking for detail in, in videos and really long great explanations with some quality a plus work uh, go check them out uh, I, I'm trying to do something a little bit different yes I do talk a lot and uh, hopefully I'll be editing some of the, the baloney out but um, I'm just trying to take a little bit different approach uh, than that and and just add to the universe not uh, compete with it anyway uh, that out of the way so what are we doing here? We've got the trusty styrofoam and the nacelles ready to go. And I also have my uh, cake decorating uh, turnstile here. Uh, now, a lot of people might take a spray can and go, I might, if I was using a spray can, I would go to my sp spray station, which is just two pieces of uh, sawhorses. But uh, we're going to be doing this here with the airbrush. And this is just where I do my airbrushing. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to put a towel or something over here behind to kind of guard all my stuff and my that my shelves, which uh, which I actually built these. By the way, um, I'm proud of them <laughs> and they're adjustable and everything. But I'm probably going to put a, 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 another towel here. You see, I've got kind of my messy towel here. Uh, I'll put something else behind here to kind of block any overspray from getting in here. And uh, I just don't want any buildup, so I'm going to cover that up. And then uh, as I go, I'm going to spray and. I'll have one hand on the turn turntable, left hand on the on the gun on the uh, airbrush gun, and I'm just going to be going up and down. And as I'm going up and down, I'm going to turn this so that way I don't have to move the airbrush around the piece. It'll just basically stay in one spot up and down, and I can keep my hand steady. And that is, uh, I think, anyway, a little bit more efficient way to do it and control things and uh, less waste because if I'm going back and forth you'll see I'm going to be going back and forth past the piece so a lot of the the paint I'm going to be expunging would be wasted it would just go off in here into the towel or whatever I'm going to have behind here so I'm going to try to go keep it a little distant up and down up and down and that way I can hit all sides of this thing and rotate it 360 degrees, hit both nacelles, multiple coats, uh, or, you know, hit both nacelles at once, do a coat, put the airbrush uh, down, and then um, air dry it. And I've also, I've got my air dryer here, ready to go. And, oh, uh, while, while I've got the, uh, the camera here, my phone, um, 
uh, held in my hand here, I will go ahead and show you where I kind of dock my, um, my airbrush. I have it just right here. And again, I apologize. I, it, it's a garage. <laughs> Uh, I've got a lot of a lot of stuff in here, but yeah, it's just this little this little piece here I don't remember where I ordered. I think I ordered it from Amazon some time ago. Uh, it's great It can hold two airbrushes. It can hold one here It can hold it here. I think it like it could hold four at a time But I like this thing because when I'm when I'm painting and I'm left-handed I just put it right in there and then I can let it sit and then go back to work uh, so this is a, a really cool little little thing so if you're gonna airbrush you got to think about, you know, where am I going to, where are you going to place it down? Uh, you know, with still some paint in the, in the cup. So, uh, yeah, I really, really, really like this thing. Uh, so a lot of things to consider if you're going to get into airbrushing, but, um, just thought I'd give you a little show of that. And one, again, one day we'll go through all of this stuff and, uh, do a little tour. Okay, so that's it for now. That's kind of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to come back after this is all painted. Again, no need to show it. Uh, up and down, steady, kind of like we did before. And then we'll come back and take a look at it. Uh, and also got these nacelles finished, which are super pretty. And they came out really nice. Uh, and I'm just going to mask these tops here and then paint the black part uh, in the gray color that we have, but the, these are illuminating, uh, just beautifully. I wish I could show it right now, but you can see, um, yeah, I don't want to put the camera in the light. I have this habit of blinding everybody. I'm going to stop that. Um, but yeah, uh, and the cells came out really nice. I'm really happy with them. They, they look really sharp, uh, with the nacelles with the lights on so when we're done uh, with these definitely we'll give a, a light a light test and, and give a show what this all looks like so that's it everybody uh, next next segment will be hopefully these completed and uh, with the nacelles on and we'll do a, a, a lighting test live uh, again just like last time so uh, stick around we'll be right back hello everyone and we are done for the most part, painting the ship. Uh, got just about 90% of the pieces done with some few exceptions. Um, so we're just gonna talk about those real quick and it's gonna be a quick segment. So uh, I have gone ahead uh, since last time and painted the deflector dish and the little, well the deflector array and the dish that comes out of it with a nice uh, copper. Uh, or bronze and uh, what that is is that it's just rust-oleum metallic finish it came out really really nice I'm pretty happy with this color uh, it's a little different than other ones I've used before previously I have used uh, dark copper uh, uh, Tamiya but I didn't quite have enough of this left to make me comfortable and I and I wanted to kind of get away from doing the airbrush on this part but if you can see here it's pretty darn close and I really like the the shiny metallic it's really shiny and I, it, it was literally like uh two squirts of the of the of the can and it covered it just beautifully with that that primer because it's it's the same brand primer so it went on really really nice I'm very happy with it. it's very smooth and the uh the little dish uh antenna looks the same so so I did the top and, and, and then I cut out this little circle masking tape because we have to come back and hit the sides of this in this gray color. So if you look at the ship, it's the the side of it is, is gray. So that's ready to go. I've got the nacelle caps done. Uh, the painted, the red came out just great. I am so pleased with it. And um, so what I did was Maybe I should have not put the tape on, but I can't take it off now. So what I did was I took the micro mask here and with a paintbrush and over a, a good amount of time, dabbed it on pretty solidly just above where this black part ends here and took my time because it had to kind of do it and then let it dry and then rotate it here and do it some more so that it wouldn't drip off. So I kind of had to blow on it and, 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 uh, you know, uh, play nice with it to get it to work. But uh, the thing that is nice about this micro mask because this is such a curved edge, 
and there's little bumps on here and it's it may, it may not be easy to see but there's these three little dots uh on these pieces there's a dot here a dot here and a little and they're bumps really uh makes it very hard to put tape on there smoothly because uh, it won't it won't go down all the way and if you're spraying you can get a little bit of spray back up in there and i don't want that so uh, this is the first time I'm doing this this way, so we'll see how it turns out. I think it'll be all right. Um, this stuff went on pretty good. Uh, it's nice and thick. And then I just put tape around the, the above there where where I, I got it and folded it over. So if I took it off right now, unfortunately I can't because it would start it would peel off the micro mask and I'd have to start all over. So uh, I'm going to be getting a couple of grabbers here. I should have gotten that beforehand so I'm gonna just put these on here like this and then when I can I can spray them and not worry about getting my hand painted and do the same thing with the other one so I've got these three bits here that I've still got to do and then um, on the saucer section I did get it all done but and um, thing is uh, it, it's very rough when you get this so I, I really like to take this really fine grit sandpaper I think this is like 1600 or 2000 and uh, I did very very lightly almost just no pressure at all and uh, you'll be very patient with it and and then and then get it off wet rag or tack cloth to get the dust off but it makes it really smooth and it's very easy to do so I'm, I smoothed that out and I'm going to give these uh, another coat here. I, I did end up sanding a little bit off here and here if you can see and a little bit uh, there where some of the paint came off uh, and, and on the edges which is normal. Thankfully no lights coming through. I did a check. Um, I didn't get the primer off. I put enough primer on there to cover it. But we just got to do a little touch up. So I'm going to touch up on this side. A little touch up on this side where I got some dirt dusty thing so I'm gonna give some light coats of this uh, just to kind of uh, once over on on the saucer and then over here on the upper edge of the secondary hull uh, I've got a little cleanup here to do uh, that I was that I uh, sanded down now this part here of this piece on this kit it's very hard not to have a seam or something there because these are two pieces if you remember uh, it's a left side and a right side very hard to get this seam to disappear just from the nature of the piece it doesn't it doesn't just fit together exactly perfectly so you end up having to putty it and then sand it and then putty it but because it's a curve now uh, if it was a straight piece you know straight fl a flush connection might not be so hard but when it's curved like this it's really hard to get that putty work just perfect I'm still learning and getting better with it um, so you can see it here I'll paint it and some of it will disappear but I, I think some of it might be left over but the good news is I can still sand that down just a touch uh, and then there's a there's a decal that goes over uh, the spine of the ship with the, the two red lines so that won't even really be apparent uh, thankfully <laughs> so sometimes those decals can hide hide some little smudges there and then um, I've got a little bit of touch up here on the bottom edge of the this would be the starboard nacelle right yeah starboard uh, there was a little bit too much putty work here I had to sand off and unfortunately I did get through the primer a little so I'm just gonna be hitting that up with with the uh, the paint and it should be fine uh, I'm going to give it a little test actually before I do that. I might have to hit it with a primer, just a shot of primer. And then um, and then I'll get it with the gray. We'll do a check. Always check. Uh, that Okay, well, th that's it, everyone. That's just kind of this segment. That's the plan we're doing. Uh, the other pieces uh, that I didn't show you here in this segment are all fine. Uh, they're, they're looking good. And once done... Um, what I'm going to do with this kit is I went ahead and bought some epoxy, uh, clear weld, quick setting epoxy. Now I haven't used this before on model, so I'm going to use, I'm going to go, I've got a bunch of old pieces of, of 
kits that I, you know, half of half pieces of kit. So I'm going to give this a try and make sure it won't disintegrate because uh, disintegrate the plastic because this says, or, or maybe I'll look online, um, but but it says here it does say most plastics. Here, uh, so if it works on tile, most plastic, ceramic, glass, and wood, but it doesn't say specifically. I think this is polystyrene. I'm not sure, uh, but I'm gonna definitely double check and then maybe test it on some other pieces. But this is a two-part epoxy. It comes. There's two tubes in here, and when you squirt it out, uh, you do a little bit, and then these two items in these different tubes mix together. You use a little mixing stick, or uh, I've got these. Um, uh, little applicators they got like little felt tips these, these are great I, I, my cousin gave me like six canisters of these like five of these are like 3.99 or something at hobby lobby i don't but uh, thank you randy for giving me those um anyway yeah you just mix it up a little bit and then you apply it and you have a, a couple minutes to work with it um i'm going to be using this stuff or tr hopefully using this on the nacelles where the nacelles go in here and in the neck here uh under there and the reason i'm doing that is because uh i just want to make sure that i get a really solid uh a solid build on this so i'm, I'm hoping it'll go good because these things can be a little heavy i did put a little more paint than i usually would have so they're a little heavier than usual and it's a heavy piece so if you figure all this piece is going to be pulling down on here like pulling down and i want it to hold forever so we're going to give that a try and see how that works uh again we'll see we'll see how the test goes but i'm pretty sure it should be fine i know a lot of modelers like to use epoxy and i think this is uh probably a good uh candidate for it we'll see i may be eating my words uh, but we'll find that out either way. So uh, that's it for now for the segment. We'll clean all this up, come back, and uh, maybe glue a couple pieces in here. Probably not. Uh, still don't know. We'll see. Catch you in a minute.